Alright guys, welcome to another installment in Dogen. Um It's been quite a long time since we've done any work in Dogen. Not because we were not working in Dogen per se, but um, we were concluding the PhD thesis, which is not quite submitted just yet, but uh, it's very close to being finished. So uh, we'll start to uh, get back to um, actual coding work uh, soon. Um, so the current work is going to be to try to, um, well, to just see where we are really. Uh, let's have a quick look. Um, remind me later. Should at some point finish this. So we have a lot of problems. Uh, it has been so January was the last release. So it's September now. So over these um, eight odd months. Uh, things have gone a little bit out of hand. Um, we have lost um, bin tray, so there's no longer bin tray, so we need to remove bin tray from the list. Uh, we lost Travis. Travis no longer supplies us with our builds. And whilst we are building on Windows, the build is red. So in fact, both both Linux and Windows builds are red at the moment, as well as C sharp actually. So we're in a very perilous state of maintenance at the moment. Um, the very first thing we need to do is to try to get a build, uh, a green build. And to do that, we have been investigating the problem that's making the builds not go green. Uh, where were we a second ago? Uh, this is just our clock. So the problem at the moment is, um, the very first problem we need to deal with is this red build. Once we figure, s figure out what's happening with the red build, we then want to move over to GitHub and stop using Travis and uh, quite likely uh, AppVayer as well, just get rid of all these uh, external um, projects because they seem to be sort of a source of problems really, they keep getting uh, decommissioned and then we need to move over to something else. So for now what we're going to do is we're going to try to um, get GitHub builds going. Uh, and a, an additional thing we probably should look into, we don't really have a logo here, but we've got GitLab set up already, I believe. Yeah, we do. Um, I think we're fairly up to date with GitLab as well. Uh, there's also CICD in GitLab, so uh, it would be nice if, we could, if it's simple, if we could just have integration with both. Uh, so that's what we're going to be looking into in this series of videos, uh, just uh, getting Dogen up and running again. Uh, so the first problem we have at the moment is the three broken tests. Uh, we've been looking at this for a few hours already. Um, basically, the problem seems to be that we're introducing a spurious new line in the org mode round trip tests. So if you look at what this guy is saying, so dogen product org tests, dogen conversion has no diff, so we are attempting some form of dogen conversion, dogen org conversion, and that's resulting in a spurious space. If we have a look at one of these models, we've already also done some work that was not recorded. You can see that all the models that break have the curious commonality of being the last line of a comment uh, in a type, whereas the models that do not Excuse me, they do not have. Um, oh, let's just double check we are recording. Where is our OBS? And yeah, we are recording. Um, so, all the models that have uh, a comment seem to uh, cause this problem when round tripping. Now, the reason why we round trip org, this is not something we do with many codecs, but we do with org. The reason why we round trip org is because sometimes uh, it's nice to be able to introduce a new feature via round tripping. Let's say, for example, we need to update the ID of every type on every model. Instead of doing it by hand, um, sometimes it's easier to just inject the ID in code. So, for instance, let's imagine that we'd like to put a GUID instead of these dia driven uh, object identifiers. It would be easier to actually just put a little bit of code that injects an ID here with a GUID that it is to go through every single model and add those IDs. So because of that, round tripping is extremely useful because um, if we need to do bulk changes across the board, we could just go to um, the code and then make a change and then round trip the models and then regenerate them. Um, now, um, that's why we need to make sure that the round tripping works and that's why we have round tripping tests. 
This is not exactly the most cleverest round trip ever. If you try to do something clever with the model, you will break it. Uh, but uh, at least for the basic cases, it should work. Uh, let's just put it on pause for a second. Right, so where are we? Uh, so, um, what we need to figure out then is why is it that we're injecting this extra line? That will be the purpose of this video. Just to get us going again, really, because it's been a while since we recorded. So, this is actually not a trivial problem as I thought it would be, because we've been looking into this um, prior to recording. Uh, I didn't even think it was worthwhile recording because I thought this would be a five second job. Turns out it's not quite as trivial. But to be fair, it can't be that complicated if you think about it. Uh, it has to be either when we input the data or when we write it out. Um, there's not a lot of places where they could be going wrong. So, um, what we shall do then is we will have a quick look. Uh, I suspect the problem is we're not putting it out. No, in fact, uh, I suspect the problem is on converting our codec. So if you remember, we have a codec representation. Uh, here we are. This is the codec representation in plant UML form. Uh, it's not a very nice model. This is something else we need to work on this release, improve these models. But this codec representation, which is quite a simple representation, it's got an object and the object is contained... Oh, actually... I'm not entirely sure now. We have to remind ourselves of what's going on here. I thought there was only an element. Uh, I'm not sure what an object is actually, but really it's just an element with an attribute. That's really what we're looking at. And uh, the model contains elements. If you look at this carefully, we should find that the model is ideally just a list of elements somewhere. Interesting enough that we can't see here. Oh yeah, uh, the model is just a list of elements, right? As you can see, this codec model is very, very, very simple. So um, if the data inside of the codec model looks correct, um, and we can prove that very simply by having a quick look at the log file. Uh, in fact, let's just have a look at one transform. So, org artifact model. So if I just have a look at the input of this transform, and that could probably be achieved by grabbing this. And we have an area here. No. Yeah, this one. Right, so... Uh, you can see your process. I will probably, just for my benefit, I'm just going to grab for this. And then log views. Ah, interesting. We don't seem to be... Ah, because maybe maybe the reason why we can't see this in there is because um, the traces are being logged with a different. Uh, yeah, I think the traces are logged with a different uh, transform. So, or perhaps because we did not enable tracing, I think. Yes, that's what it is. But okay, cool. So we don't have tracing. So uh, that's not a problem. We can very simply go up to the compilation, find the tests. There it is. And in the tests, I think. Right, here we are. So this guy here determines what's enabled. So I suspect all we need to do is to say. Um, Enable tracing locally, true. And we'll put a fix me here so we remember to disable this. And then if we just uh, go back to compilation and rerun the tests. Now hopefully this will trigger tracing for that one test. And all we need to do is to make sure that on that transform we see the comments with no lines. Now I'm pretty sure this is going to be the case if I'm honest. 
because I looked at the log file and I can see trimming is working. Uh, but um, just to double check. Uh, right, so uh, we just now need to figure out where our stuff is going to go. Right, so there's a lot of data here. What model were we looking at? Dorchen org. Uh, so diffing, not sure what diffing means. But uh, we'll just keep looking at all instances of dorchen.org around here. Physical production. Okay, we'll keep going. It's going to be, hopefully, detailed tracing, reporting. Summary. Um, hmm, interesting. Uh, perhaps the name of the test will give us a clue. Dogen Products Org. No, no mention. Um, where would these traces be? One problem when you haven't touched the code base in a long while. Um, ah, actually, one way to find out, of course, is to just have a look at the log file, I think. And look for trace. Okay, so you can see the tracing. Oh! Enabling is false. Ah, okay, this is interesting. Enable tracing false. Clearly, we didn't do a very good job here. Um, Let's double check we didn't do something silly. Are we in the right place even? Uh, ah, we enable tracing somewhere else. Uh, uh or conversion is no diffs supply. No. The good thing about uh, Emacs is that you can just jump over to the diffs. And have a look at what we've done. Model to org transform, that's a good fix. Dogen org product test and document to string transform. Right, so ah we just enabled it for identification. Okay, that's not a problem. Right, so um we just enabled it for the different tests. Funnily enough, that's also a broken um something is also broken. So we'll probably average about an hour on this video. Uh we are 15 minutes into it, so uh, hopefully with one hour we can um, get to the bottom of this issue. What we'll do for good measure is go to logs and we'll open another area here, perhaps on 8. And let's call that Dogen Tracing. Right, so uh, I'll just use a log as a starting point. And I think... Hopefully now, if I look at Dogen org, now it still remains the question as to where this would be. Um, by product generation, I don't think it's by product production, perhaps. Right. Okay. So production. That sounds uh, plausible place, I guess. Um, Right, there we are. So you can see we're in getting into the Kodak transform chain, uh, model to artifact. So let's think about this for a second. Artifact to artifact chain, because we are running org to org, and then artifact to model, and then model to artifact. So if I just look at the input, or the output even of this guy here, and jq dot will do. And if I just space ah okay, so this is gonna be too far, this is already the end result, so let's just go to the beginning of this. Uh so if I just JSON this, as you can see we're in JSON. Um now all I need to do is to say, is there anyone with an error message? Right, so you can see here, very helpfully, that the original content did have a couple of new lines, but after all the parsing we ended up without any new lines which is exactly what we want. So that proves that everything's fine, 
far as this guy goes. Um, then, um, quite helpfully, what we can then do is to look at these transforms and see what's happening at every step of the process. So uh, this is the input going into org. Now, of course, if I just do a uh, uh, interesting, we seem to have broken chase. Ah, okay, right. The reason why I broken chase is because this is an actual org, and you can see here quite clearly there's two lines in this org mode file. Uh, we probably should actually in the transforms we should take into account the file format yes yeah, so let's just create a story for this uh, uh, if we say something like uh, change file format of tracing dumps according to Kodak so at present, we always dump the codec, no, the transform inputs and outputs as dot JSON. Uh, however, uh, uh, if the content is in, oh, did I just disable the format? Is in org mode format it would make more sense to have a dot org extension uh, the transform doing the dump should provide or uh, overwrite really the extension Right, cool. So we will come back to that in a second. Fix work and org mode tests. Um, right, so we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, something else for the sprint. So we were in um, area 8, if I remember right. Tracing. So as you can see here, uh, by then it's too late. We've already done the wrong thing. And this is the input to org. And we know for sure the input. Ah, interesting, interesting, very interesting. So what this tracing is revealing to us, so this is why tracing is such a brilliant thing here in Doja. You can clearly see what happened here now. Um, the inputs um, in whatever shape this is, so this is in org probably, uh, as you can see, the input in org already contains a new line, a spurious new line here. So we seem to have entered a new line. Uh, and I think the reason why we do that, if we look for new line, you can see uh, that there's loads of new lines here. Right, there we are. So a lot of these things have got new lines. So I think there's two options here. Clearly we've done these new lines because uh, we probably rely on the new line being present. Um, so, so if you think about this, um, what are we trying to say here? We're trying to say, when we receive the data in the codec model, there are no new lines. But when we do a transform between the codec model into JSON, which we can find out about here. So um, the codec model is transformed from codec to org. So probably something like model to um, org. Model to org artifact. This is too high level, I think. But if this for transform will call... Oh no, that's correct. So this is an org um, document to string document to string Presumably this is the guy. Okay, so... Oh, sorry, I've changed my key bindings in Emacs. In fact, I've changed my entire Emacs configuration recently. Uh, so there will be a few errors going on here. Right, so this guy here is receiving um, a codec model and is converting it to an entity, uh, sorry, an org uh, document. And so all we need to now do is to say where uh, an element, there we are, this is an element, is transformed it's going to iterate to 
a pair of attributes somewhere. Some guy is going to iterate to a pair of. Uh, in fact, Venice is going to be here, isn't it? Uh, so we take the content and then very cleverly we inject a new line here, as you can see. Now, I'm not sure this is a good idea. I do not think this is a good idea. I think. I think the notion of having new lines should be a property. So, so do we have two options then? We, we it, th this guy is basically saying whatever it is that you get from here, we always insert a new line, and then we store that in memory, and then when we write it, the new line's already there, and that's one way of doing it. But now, of course, the problem is the code direct model did not have the new line in it. Um, if we don't put the new line in it, what's going to happen, of course, is that our models uh, in area 6 perhaps, 7 perhaps, yes. So our models, so these guys here, uh, are not going to have a new line here. We would like that new line to be there. Uh, but by putting that new line there, we also enforce the new line here, where we normally, by convention, don't have an extra new line. Uh, Although, to be fair, this must mean that we are somewhere, we're placing a new line at the very end of the file as well. Let's, uh, let's start by doing the obvious thing and taking away this new line here. Of course, as you can imagine, this is going to break all tests, so... Uh, uh, we will clearly increase the problem. Done 22 minutes. Um, it's getting in the swing of things again. A bit difficult after s such a long time without doing any videos, but uh, right as you can imagine, this resulted in a lot of diffs. But that's fine. We expect that. So now, as you can see, all the places where we're putting a new line are now gone. And interestingly enough, of course, the diff where we had a diff is probably not going to be a diff now, which is good. Uh, So then, the next thing we can do is we can then say, okay, so the new line is no longer in the org mod model itself, but perhaps it could be injected as we dump to um, as we dump to a string, and that's going to be somewhere such as this guy here. I need to get used to this. Um, New shortcuts. Right, so as you can see here, this guy is now going to say... Right, so as you can see, this guy is indeed outputting a new line. And really, the problem now begins with... Ah, interestingly enough, we do have something here. So the, the difficulty now is that we need to understand whether there's anything coming after us or not. And if there is, we need to put a new line. Um, which, to be fair, I think it should do it, really, shouldn't it? I mean, clearly what we've done there is we did a quick hack because we didn't really understand the problem. Because what this is doing is it's basically saying, as you're about to render a section, you then inject a new line. That seems sensible enough to me. Uh, let's just do something really, really silly here. And uh, as you can imagine, we'll put a fix me. Uh, we will, uh, just for a laugh, let's see what happens if I force two new lines. Of course, as you can imagine, this is all hackery, really. We're just starting to understand how the new space management or the new line management works in this transform. It probably will reduce considerably the number of diffs. Um, mm, actually, it didn't. Uh, ah, okay, right. The problem, of course, is that we are now 
Yes, okay, fine. So um, this is the diff before. So uh, that was useful. Now we know that this is happening just before entering the text. And now what we're trying to say is um, when you're about to render a headline, you are bound to... Aha, uh -huh, here we are. So, right, the hackery then will be to say, please... Um, don't seem to have electric delete. Oh, we do. Very clever. Oh, this is very clever. Uh, I've uh, this new configuration of Emacs is uh, full of surprises, really. If if you are interested in um, Emacs and Emacs configs, uh, and you'd like to check the configuration that we use for these videos, you can always have a look at my profile. In keeping with my Angolan theme, you, uh, you there is Kunen, which is a river in Angola, as you see here, close to the Namibian border, and um, the. The, the configuration we use is the literate, literate mode, literate org mode, as everything here is org mode. And you can browse the configuration, because uh, of course org mode renders as a nice, lovely HTML in GitHub and GitLab. So you can see here, I tried to comment out, I mean, a lot of this is copy and paste from other people, of course, but I tried to keep it... Um, well, I tried to make sure that only things that I was uh, sure of what they did in Emacs were added to my config, because previously, like uh, many uh, budding Emacs users, I copied a lot of stuff from other people and I've used other people's modes without really knowing what they did that well. But as you get older and as you start using Emacs for longer and longer, you start to realize that actually you need full control about everything. And uh, what this does now is that I've only added more 95% of the configuration options are configuration options I understand what they do. And uh, they're there for reasons uh, that I, I decided rather than because somebody else did. Right, so, okay, this is very interesting then. So what we've done now is um, we don't enforce a space all the time. As you can see, it broke in a few places. Um, ah, interesting. So the problem now is that if there is no contents prior, now we create a space where there was none. Right, okay, and that's also not ideal. The reason why this is not ideal is because if you put, I think, if you put a, a space where there is no content, let's do a quick test here. Uh, yeah, if I put a space here. Ah, no, actually, org mode does the right thing. Perhaps that's what we should do, really. Perhaps we should. Um always enforce a space, because, I mean, like I say, this is not supposed to be a general purpose org-to-org -org, um, converter. It just needs to be good enough for our purposes, and it needs to round-trip, because we do use round-trip often. So, um, we can accept some weird conventions that other org mode users probably wouldn't, uh, because our needs are so specific. Um, this does not mean that, of course, if you're using Doja and you need to uh, follow these conventions, uh, you could do whatever you like with your org mode documents within reason, but for Dogen itself, uh, we do have that requirement. So what we're going to do then is we're going to say um, this is acceptable, I think. So uh, before anything else, we will uh, we'll take all of these changes. Because what's going to happen, of course, is that in a second, this is all going to get confused with model-specific changes. In fact, to be honest, let's just try to commit a few of these things, because I think a few of these things are standalone changes. So, um, things don't really uh, matter, we better get them out of the way before they get lost. Right, this mixes two types of changes, which is never a good idea. So let's just get rid of a few of these things. So I think the lambda changes are okay. That's a fix me, this is some spacing issue, so let's just basically say um, org use lambda variable name for 
Um, just very simple changes that don't really require. Now we know why all these changes are here, just because of our hackery. Uh, this, I think. Uh, update identity. Change commentary to match code. I think we did some hacks in that model that caused it to break. Uh, ah, here again we have a change that we'd like to take. Um, Kodak. Uh, fix transform name in tracing for model to org transform and as you can see there's a lot of stuff here that we don't really need to confuse with the rest so right this change here we will get rid of this fix me we will keep um, I don't think we need any more tracing and this is the stuff we're working on so we just by the end of it we only end up with a minimal amount of changes there. Now what we'll do is we'll do a build uh, with full-blown code generator, full-blown build with code generator rather than tests. Go up to the thing and now we need to do something like uh, generate... Ah, I don't actually remember what the target is. So generate all org, to generate all org mod models. It's probably convert org to org, I'm not sure if we have a target for this actually. Uh, quick check, well, clearly we must, um, where would that be, perhaps the main, let's look for gal, ok here we are, generate, oh ok I think it may just be convert all org cow, um, so if I just call cow, right so this I believe is going to generate all org mod models or regenerate them, and as you can see, um, so this in a way this is actually a very good demonstration of how we use org to org transforms. So, uh, I mean, <laughs> you could say that we probably didn't really need to have all these spaces, but uh, let's just say that we need it. Um, it would be quite painful if I had to do all of this by hand, wouldn't it, really? Uh, so, it was a nice way to just do this manually, automatically, sorry. Uh, ah, one thing we need to take into account is org to org transforms um automatically uh create human readable titles which actually to be honest that's a good thing uh all we need to make sure though is that we can still run the test in round trip after this change so if i go back to five and say please run all tests um, as you can see we did a lot of changes to the models and these are real changes now so uh it's not just a test if this generate different code then we're now going to have another problem Okay, so now we have another set of problems. Right, okay, so the problem is the relational model has not been updated. Um, that's not a problem. The reason why is the relational model is probably not enabled. Um, we probably should really. Uh, let's put another story here. Um, enable relational model locally um, at present we are not building locally the relational model we need to ensure we are not breaking this code so another story for us to look at later uh, what we'll do and now you'll see the pain of doing things by hand We'll grab the relational model and we'll have a quick look. And this is what needs to be done if it's not done automatically. We need to, uh, for every entry in this document, we need to ensure. Of course, you would probably say, why is it that none of these entities have got comments? Which is also a fairly valid comment. Um, we've been a little bit lax on commentary. Um, I suspect it's everything. Um, we should really. 
Uh, another aside, actually, that just occurred to me is we found recently this thing called org spec, and uh, this is something that we probably want to support at some point. Um, org spec. Here we are. Um, this is a very nice mode, and if you have a quick look at the output of uh, org spec. So as you can see, this is a very, very nice um, output format. And I think it would be really nice if you could output uh, models like this. And another very interesting thing, of course, is this uh, um, integration with graphics. So uh, what we want in the future is that our org mode document should contain the plant UML representation. In other words, these guys here. We should have at least a link to it. Um, so um, let's just add another story here. Well, let's do two things. First, let's add a story. Um, let's see there. Integrating org spec with org model, which is the name we're giving to the org mod models for Dogen. Uh, put a link here. As you can imagine, it would be very nice to have a proper. Uh, Output proper layout of a document like this for a model, and we just put a little blurb so that we remember what this thing does. Till the next time we look at it, we know what it does, uh, and maybe a comment of it. it would be nice to generate models that can produce org spec output. Okay, uh, another thing for later. Right, so the task that we were doing a second ago, before I got sidetracked, was a boring task, perhaps that's why I got sidetracked, of uh, adding spaces. And so hopefully this would comprehensively demonstrate why it is that we need... Uh, I wonder if these guys need it as well. We uh, need the uh, org to org transform. Because this is really uh, rather very painful every time we need to change the layout of all the documents we'd have to go through this pain of doing things by hand the only reason why we're doing for this uh, particular model is because this model is excluded from the build and I just don't want to be bothered to, I can't be bothered at the moment to include it in the build okay that looks alright so let's try to run another test um, so we, we tried to fix three spaces and end up fixing every single document but or changing. I'm not sure if you could call this a fix. Uh, right, there we are. Um, org relational is still causing trouble and is in tracing. Uh, oh, sorry, what did you say? Was it tracing? Hmm, peculiar. I wonder if there's two tracing. They're tracing, tracing, perhaps. Huh. Okay, uh, that's a bit unexpected. So the problem is in tracing next to an end. Ah, there we are. Just going blind. Right, so as you can see here, this seems to have addressed our problem. And it's not a complete hack, to be honest. It is interesting to have these spaces in between entries. I think it's fine. And it is better to do the... not to store the spaces as part of the state of the org mode model. It's better to store them um, as part of uh, the transform, the final transform. So what we'll do is we will, well, let's just quickly review these changes to make sure we don't it looks suspicious. As you can see, they all look pretty much above board. Um, ah, we even gained, we even gained, uh, interestingly enough, what exactly is happening here? Where are the spurious chair? Let's have a slightly more careful look at this. 
Uh, one annoying thing with org mode at present is if you uh, go to a line, it doesn't automatically open up. The um, Okay, we're a bit lost now. Uh, I wanted this to change here. Yes, so prior to this, we had. What, what model are we on? Kodak.org. There's an artifact with a mustache template. Why does Kodak.org contain a mustache template? Ah, yes, okay, M bug. Right, cool, we found another bug here. Um, the problem with this is, if we detect a type with the name content, we automatically insert moustache. Um, okay, so uh, let's just call this a bug. We are finding a lot of extra work. We had one task and now suddenly we create about 20. Uh, so org to org transform um, Create mustache templates incorrectly. So um, at present we um, let's just make sure this is a source. Ah, there's a slight problem here. Um, we do, I don't think we can have source source. Perhaps what we need to do with this is instead of saying create sources, we just manually just do this guy here manually. Uh, at present, we uh, determine the language for the block by looking at the name of the property if it's called content we uh, use mustache however if a user creates a field called content this should not kick in we should have a mm, configuration option at the model level that enables this intelligent behavior and mm, enable it only for the Dogen text model. So the Dogen.txt model is the place where we actually have the text templates. Um, which also reminds me, I think we do not have poly mode. No, we don't have poly mode, so uh, let's just quickly jump over to my Emacs configuration and put a story here. Um, before I forget, missing modes, uh, poly modes, with dojen stitch support. Right, so. Um, so that was the problem there. I think we captured that in our story, so I think we'll allow that to go. But this also demonstrates why it is important to go uh, through these diffs fairly carefully. Because um, there's always surprises somewhere. Uh, and just for good measure, just so you see what I'm talking about, let's go up to modeling again. So if I were to... Um, um, open up the text model. So here you have a lot of templates and you see what I meant a second ago. So these templates here are moustache templates. Um, ah, it seems like we don't have moustache mode either. Uh, moustache templates. Um, where were we? Seven, I think. Uh, in fact, uh, this one is very easy, so I'll just do that very, very quickly. Let's just go up to Kunen uh, again. Uh, if I just go here to um, development, perhaps. 
Let's take one of these guys. Um. So what I'll do is very very quickly. I'm just gonna uh, install. Uh, we are going a little bit all over the place, but um, I'm just going to very quickly install Mustache in Emacs because it is uh, very easy. Oh, we just have to make sure we're not installing Mustache templates themselves. I think it looks alright. So, so if you just basically stay um, Mustache and we say ensure true. I don't think it needs any configuration, so... Oh! What have we done? Right, we've done something very silly. So let's just save this. And then we can... Right, so what we really meant to do was something like this. Right, so there's moustache mode, and we will just install it for a laugh. That's it, um, and now we'll resume our demonstration. So there's the moustache template, and then what we can do is, if you say, uh, in fact, to be honest, if I just reopen this document, maybe org mode is clever enough. Not quite. No such language, moustache mode. Uh, okay, so I think the problem, uh, I, we are really getting a little bit off the script here, but uh, so what I'll do very, very quickly, uh, really something we probably should be looking at a different video to do this, but um, since we're here, uh, so the problem of course is that we don't have moustache. I'm going to quickly go to my old configuration and just see what we've done for moustache. We must have done something. I think the problem is... Uh, ah, most interesting. Uh, uh, I think... org bubble add language. I suspect the problem is... Oh, I think um, I need to... Apologies, the usual chaos, so I had to pause for a second. Right, I think the problem is that we need to somehow have some magic. Um, so I'm just going to do the lazy thing, it's going to be fixed properly later. And just do something like... Um, Org babble add languages and add mustache here. Now I'm not sure if this is the right thing to do. Aha, uh -huh, so we probably still need some mode or other to do the interpretation. I mean, we might have to give up on this right now, but, uh, so, seems like no one has created an integration um, to allow you to do this in org mode, which is quite surprising, if you ask me. Okay, cool. Uh, we're not going to get into uh, a whole, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, diversion here and creating this mode. We probably will in a minute, but not now, uh, so that this video doesn't get too complicated. So, um, for now, very sadly, you can't edit the moustache template like this. It's a shame because, um, well, what I'll do is just to demonstrate what would happen is if I click on this and um, I just have to give it some kind of language, I'm not sure. Right, here we are. So text is a good one. And then if I just basically say moustache... Ah, that's interesting. Moustache mode is not coming up. I wonder if that is the problem. We did install moustache mode. Um, I 
I'm quite convinced we did. Uh, so, yeah, as you can see, Mustache appears to be installed, but it doesn't show up as a mode. That's peculiar. Not quite sure why this is. Um, normally, it would show up as a mode after installation, and you should be able to. Uh, start from here. I'm just going to do one last, I mean we really are wasting quite a lot of time with things that are not related to the problem at hand, uh, but um, in typical Emacs fashion when something goes wrong, you want to know why. What I'll do is I'll load mustache mode by hand. Okay, as you can see it's definitely loaded. Still can't see mustache mode here. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Um, it literally should have been... And the other thing, of course... Yeah, so I, I'm not sure why it should, should have really worked. At this point you should be able to um, create... Um, uh, to load up moustache mode. It doesn't really do much, to be honest. It just gives you the fields in a nice highlighted way. Um, and... These are the moustache uh, transforms. And we, in addition to the moustache transforms, we also have the uh, uh, stitch stitch ones that I think are present. Are marked as. Let's have a quick look. Okay, we are now it's the configuration. Hmm. Model to text transform. So I suspected. One of these guys here. So because we haven't seen this code in a long while, it's um, it's a bit difficult just to get your head around things again. So what I'm looking for at the moment is I'm just looking for the second type of transforms, which are uh, our stitch transforms. Uh, they are in the text model, where we are, and in here you can see there's two names, two big namespaces, uh, and each of these then have the transforms. Uh, so for instance, if I was to uh, find the graphical representation of this model, there we are, you will see, this is a very, very uh, bad representation, but uh, see here, for example, inside of Visual Studio, all of these are transforms. So um, if I just look for stitch template content, there we are. So as you can see here, um, these are these are the second type of transforms that we've got, and these are at the moment marked as fundamental because we don't have poly modes set up correctly. So that's something we need to look into. But those appear to be correct. Um, so uh, to cut a very long story short, this all looks all right. So we will uh, go back to our diff and just look for uh, peculiarities. Or else we just see very simple uh, new lines that looks good. I suspect that's mainly what we're gonna see. Again, uh, we remove spurious spaces in transforms, which is a good thing. We'll see a lot of this, I suspect, in the text model. And you can see the spurious blank line there being taken out as well. Okay, that looks good too. Not going to bother with this one. Not going to bother with this one. That looks good. I mean, I'm not doing a very thorough check because uh, most of these models are very similar. And this is the most different one and at some point you'll see lots of minuses, which is the moustache and um, stitch templates. Lots of pluses. Lots of pluses. Lots of pluses. Now, we just have to be slightly careful here. These are external models. That's alright, we just remove the underscores. Lots of spaces. As you can see, we don't just do that for Dogen models, we do to all the models, so including these external ones. 
but there's no, there are no diffs in the tests, we are happy. Ah, interesting. Uh, why? Okay, so we fixed some indentation issues. Again, another reason why we have this transform org to org. Uh, again, indentation issue. Ah, interesting. Okay, right, there is a bug. We have lost some custom ID, so just have to be very careful with this. Um, very, very careful. Right, this is not a good change. Uh, we have to be very careful here. So, uh, before we go any further, let's just double check that these other models did not lose their custom IDs. So these guys here look alright. As you can see. Custom IDs are still there. But this guy does not. And it's very interesting that... Uh, Only a few types seem to have lost their custom ID. See, this is just an indentation change, so that's fine. Custom ID was preserved. I think the reason why we lost the custom IDs is because these custom IDs have been placed at the attribute level. Not at the type level. I think this is actually alright. Let's have a quick look. So, um, this is a module. Yeah, as you can see here, we had an element with an attribute, and there was a custom ID associated with it. So, um, this I think in a way it's a kind of a bug, really. So, let's just um, write this down. Um, so, uh, we found about 10 bugs here. Uh, so or to or transform removes custom IDs from attributes. Um, so really what we want is probably uh, some kind of way of knowing which model this was from. Otherwise when we look at this we're not going to be able to figure out uh, Did we st restart recording? We did, close to an hour. Diff. Oh. Right, so I oh, don't care about the space too much. Um. I do care about. Well, I should um I always preserve all attributes. Okay, uh it's not necessarily the case that we are in control of all the attributes inside of a uh of a type, so uh we shouldn't really be in the business of removing attributes, so that that's not a good thing. And uh, what we'll do is um we will um I think we probably will refuse these changes and do this manually, I think. Although, to be fair, some of the changes are good. And I don't think that's a very big problem of not having custom IDs. So, to be, to be fair, um, you're probably going to say this is not ideal, but I'm going to accept the removal of custom IDs at the attribute level. We need to, um, we need to work on the custom IDs. They're going to change quite a bit. Uh, so, uh, I think that's fine for now. And for variability also, I'll accept these changes. Okay, cool. So now, I just want to have a quick look at the code changes themselves and make sure that they do make sense, because as you remember, we did some hacks here. So we changed two things. We changed the model to org, and we changed document to string. So... In this case, we removed... Okay, fine. So let's just go up to our coding area. Uh, model to org and let's look for fix me so in here I would like to say well there's nothing to be said really because we just removed uh, what was there so I think that's fine um, and the document to string transform uh, so we could say 
something like uh, since uh, so always insert a line between the new sorry the new um, headline and the previous content. And now we could say uh, build headline. And then add the tags. No, actually, to be honest, this is all part of the building deadline, so I'm not going to bother with a separate section here. Uh, and then we could just basically say render headline contents. These are basically three logical operations we've got here. Um, and then, well, since we're doing this, uh, render all sub headlines. I just, uh, you probably would say this is the uh, commenting for commenting sake, but it's just for me logically, I like to see a method with um, sort of the operations inside of that method so that I can quite quickly see what this, th what are the blocks of code and what do they do. So I think I'm happy enough with this. Uh, I'm gonna commit, uh, of course, we're gonna run the tests again, and hopefully everything will be green. So uh, we did, f uh, interestingly, error in processing to nil. Sometimes we get these very strange Tremax errors. I think Tremax is made by doing a follow here. Uh, ah, interesting. Ah, as you see here, this is good we got such good tests because clearly we must have introduced a mistake here. So text.org, by mistake we must have... Uh, change something um, I'm sure it was text.org was text.org ah here we are so this was not e expected change and it broke the tests not quite sure what column had to be should appear. Right, why is there a diff now? Um, ah, interesting. Um, attribute was much further away. So I think that is also a bug, perhaps. We shouldn't should have honored the distance that org mode expects. But there you are. Um, just to make life easier, I'm just gonna... As you can see, the good thing about this is you can see how, um, how good these tests are. Because we are picking up on all these problems. Uh, beforehand. And if I now run the tests again... Hopefully now, I mean, because you can imagine the code that um, gives us the the position where to put the attributes is not exactly trivial, so uh, I think we may have made a mistake there. Um. Ah, okay, good. Okay, so we've gone too far. Okay, good. No, this is good. So uh, all those spaces that we added was actually a mistake. I'm a bit happier now, actually. Um, let's go back to our model. Let's make the spacing here what org mode expects, because that's a good thing. Uh, we did miss something here, actually. But I didn't quite know why we had that error. That's a new one. Failed to delete the output directory. Let's run the test again. I don't really like this sort of... Um, Traffic lighting, really. Right. I am happy that everything is passing. And we will just commit as is. So, um, codec, comma, org. Um, 
improve spacing in org to or, or white lines improve um, blank lines in order to work transforms update all models to uh, use the new convention in white space in the blank line convention okay um, and so with this hopefully we have um, addressed all the issues with the broken test. So we will just close this story now. And uh, one thing that we haven't quite learned with the new mode is how to use the key bindings. Uh, for org that is still here. Right, so that resolves the problem. So the next story we'll be working on is the actual move to uh, build to GitHub, which is the series, um, the name of the series of uh, blog uh, videos. Um, we were working on some oxygen related stuff as well, but uh, anyway, so there we are, already 15 hours, so soon we'll have enough for a release. Um, let's just put this story next to that one as well. Okay, so just to recap what we achieved in this hour or so, uh, we identified the number of tests that were breaking. Um, it wasn't very clear why they were breaking, but uh, and why they started breaking. Clearly we must have done some uh, changes to the spacing or something like that and then suddenly the test started breaking and because over the last few months we haven't really um, had the time to do anything uh, we um, we didn't really fix the problem so we left the build broken. So the first thing before we could consider moving to a different CI provider is we need to make sure the test passed locally which is what we did. It resulted in a, a lot of changes to the org mode files uh, but that's fine. Uh, we are happy enough with the changes. And that should be it for, for this video. Thanks very much for watching.